Hi everyone, we here bringing you the latest on the British royal family, and today the subject is still about Meghan and Harry. Harry's stupidity. He was turned into a puppet. Meghan is using him to fight her enemies. The suffix is so-called troops continues to crumble around them. After Sarah Ferguson, the Duchess of York, poured doubts on the claim that she taught Meghan how to curtsy for the Queen. An interview with The Telegraph, Fergie said. I don't really know Meghan. I haven't really met her. I think I spoke to her at the funeral and I thought she looked absolutely beautiful. And this flies in the face of claims made by the Montecito moaners in both the Oprah interview and Harry's book Spare or Should That Beware or Indeed Spice. The Fergie had been a crucial part of their lives while in the royal family, very quickly, right in front of the house. We just practiced and then walked in and you and Harry practiced. And Fergie ran out and she said, are you ready? Despite the lack of interaction though, Fergie still offered some advice for the couple amid their never-ending bust up with the press. Do you have any advice for Harry and Meghan? I think the best way to answer that is to really take hold of your own self and lead by example. I wouldn't give advice. I would say that your actions speak louder than words, and I feel really strongly about that. It's Megan. Allergic to the truth. She her truth is her weapon. Our truth is her enemy. That's the real problem. But this is a battle. This is a real battle for the truth and the battle for the monarchy that we're now facing. Indeed. Now obviously Harry is calls up in all of this. And look, I don't mind saying we were having a little chat just a moment ago there, and you've got a bit of a theory about why Harry continues to go along with this stuff. Who goes on TV to not only confess that he is suffering mental problems, but says that the solution to his problems were, amongst many other drugs, illegal psychedelic drugs. Which is an astonishing thing to say that he felt much better if he took these mind-bending drugs and his whole manner in that hour it was all about himself. It was so very self-indulgent criticism of course about his father and the whole royal family and all the rest of it. But at the end of it, you thought this selfish, self-indulgent, rather dim man. What is he doing? Why is he pouring this out now? First, of course he of course he loves the publicity. Here he is. He's completely uncontrolled. He can attack everyone and gets lots of attention. And he has now become a chronic attention seeker, like a seal at a zoo. He really is, and he loves it and he's earning his money from it. That's his whole attacking the royal family now has become. Is money in memory source of income? But I then reflected this something even more sinister about this, all because ever since the Netflix series, we've had Harry and endless interviews to promote his book. And now up comes this one-hour extravaganza with a very weird quack who believes in therapy and admits all sorts of sins and all the rest of it. But there's no Megan. And what is fascinating is that Megan, the person who really fired up. This whole crisis he's absent. And I began thinking that really this is really very clever of her. She is sending Harry out to fight her battle. She stays in obscurity, he fights, she's using him to fight her enemies. That's the role. The Windsor family, the royal family, he is the one taking and take all the flack and she stands back. So he has become now her puppet in a way which was not clear. I mean obviously you could imagine that his mouth. Moving purely because Megan has her her hand inserted somewhere and it's right up there like a puppet. You could picture that. You really. But when it comes to this kind of stuff now, do you not think it is really noticeable that Harry was next to Megan when she was telling her truth? They wheeled him in like an idiot really after this Oprah interview, but... When it comes to Megan now, she is separate, she is distinct. She's leaving him on her own. And I can't help but wonder whether or not she's trying to let him create this picture as damaged goods, and that she's there to look after him and this is what she's got to deal with at home. Your views on that? I think that many people thought that Harry was brainwashed when he was still in England and that when he went to California and she promised him freedom, he grabbed it because he was besotted by her and it was all about. His need is now, it's got I think much worse. She now is completely manipulating him to fight her battle against the royal family because the coronation, which is the most important event to come and for many years is of course will give King Charles his whole status for the rest of his short reign. 
And if Harry is able to destabilize it, if Harry by playing his games, by attacking the king more and more, he is able to to just ask on this. Well, because there are strong schools of thought. Harry's not particularly bright. And Meghan, if she is just a pound shop Z-list actress, surely the full knight of the monarchy should be able to overcome unnecessary distractions from Winch and Ginger. And they've not been able to do that yet. And I find that weird. And I think that's very much, because King Charles is weak. He's worried he's on the whole, he's not a decisive man who wants to in the end. Now, I do think that his decision to evict them from Frogmore was a sign of great optimism for those of us who've been advocating, especially on this program, that you should be tougher. I had a little rumor was that potentially William wanted them, no one near the royal circle because he didn't trust them around the other royal children, that they would be there because he didn't want them indoctrinated by this rubbish. Well, I don't think William wants him in the picture full stop. And he's quite right. And more. The point I think Kate doesn't because she's been insulted by Meghan and Harry. And I think Camilla, the queen also have been called the wicked stepmother, does want Harry there. So I think the eviction from Frogmore is the first stage, but he's got to do more trials. He's gotta say to Harry, of course you're invited, my dear son, but has road 54 for you behind the column, do you still want to come? And I think in the end, what happened on Saturday and Meghan's invisibility is all in the end a threat to Charles. That Megan is playing the shots, and he's now got to answer back and cut them down. Look, it's a question that's worthwhile being asked given the context of what we've just spoken about. I mean, do you actually fear that Harry is a victim of some kind of quite nasty domestic issues here? Well, he's a victim of his own stupidity and his own folly, and he's a victim as well, in the sense now of Megan, who's playing him. But the only way to stop the whole thing is for the king to actually these lies and lies, isn't he? In this idea now that Fergie can come out and go, well, I've never actually really met Meghan. What? Why would she sit there in front of Oprah and say aren't you taught me how to curtsy? Well, because in the end that is actually irrelevant whether she knows Fergie. We know that there were 17 major lies in the Upper Winfrey interview. It's just another one, and we know it's another one. But the the his book was full of distortions too. Harry's book. And we're now faced a crisis, growing crisis, will the coronation be overshadowed by the Montecito?